This week on Awesome Chat, we talked to Ashley Beamer about using Facebook Live to inform the people in her campaign and the technology around Pittsburgh. That and more Awesome Chat. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, Mike Sorg here in the offices of Ashley Beamer here in Brookline neighborhood. I'm <laughs> trying not to say Beachview because that's yes. what I'm used to, of course. That's where our studios are. Uh, this is your awesome chat. We're going to be talking about government and technology and everything yes, here, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, and of course, check out everything at awesomecast.com. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page. And of course, please subscribe to those, especially the Facebook uh, because we do do a lot of Facebook Lives like we're doing here. I don't know how many Facebook Lives we have going on. There's so many cameras in front of us. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, and like half of them are phones, to be honest. Uh, but uh, Ashley, thank you for joining me on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Or, uh, thank, me th- th- thank you for letting me invade your office. With yeah, my no, show, anytime, so. anytime. So right now, of course, you're in the middle of a campaign as, yes. as of this recording. Yes. Um, can you tell us like, you know, what, what are you campaigning for, for people who maybe aren't in the area or not yeah. aware of what we're doing? doing in this neighborhood, I guess. Sure. Yeah. So I'm running for Pittsburgh City Council District 4. Mm-hmm. Um, that includes Beachview, Brookline, Carrick, Overbrook, uh, Bonaire, a little slice of Mount Washington, and McC- McKinley Park. It's like it's like a loop underneath the city. Yeah. It? It's the yeah. southernmost neighborhoods. We border mm-hmm. uh, the suburbs in all cases. And uh, yeah, so I'm running to um, take over this seat from Natalia Rudiak. She has served two terms on city council and decided not to run again. Um, I've been running or I've been working in her office for about six years now, um, going to community meetings like yours in Beachview. I live in Beachview um, and, you know, working to get what residents need in uh, the district and also working on a number of policy initiatives. So um, when she said she wasn't going to run again, I felt it was really important to keep up the good work. Mm, absolutely. And you're already involved. That's how I was introduced to you was at those community meetings in Beachview as yeah. I started actually kind of paying attention to my neighborhood uh, 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 last last year. Uh, so and that's gotten involved in so much. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> but, uh, but but, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, one thing that kind of caught our attention, of course, is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, you're using Facebook Live these days with your campaign. I am, mm-hmm. yeah. So we have, just to give you a snapshot of our district, we have about 34,000 voting age residents mm-hmm. in uh, District 4, and that comes out to about you know something like 15,000 households. So we have to be really creative in how we talk to people. Um, we can't go knock on everybody's door once a week to tell them what we're doing and how things are going. Um, we can't call everybody. Um, and mail is really expensive, it turns out. So we try to send out you know a piece of mail every year or so. Um, but um, you know, social media is really the most direct way to reach people and to get our message across. Uh, and for this campaign, you know, we were using social media to get volunteers for canvassing and, and phone banking and things like that. And I felt like we weren't really getting the opportunity to talk about the issues um, to a wider audience. Uh, I had been going door knocking, talking to people on their porches. But um, we decided to do Facebook Live because, you know, this this city council deals with a lot of issues that are very close to people's um, everyday lives. And I wanted to be able to tell people what I think about certain things and and kind of lay out my experience. It's probably the most direct effect, right? Um, Yeah. As as far as city or you know governments go yeah we're the boots on the ground right we're the we're the potholes we're the um salting the roads in the winter um we're keeping your parks nice and um fresh and safe um you know we deal with public safety we deal Mm -hmm. with all those everyday things that um that people really care about and maybe you know when things are going well people take for granted um and uh we we need them to keep going well so you were introduced to facebook live you've been we were talking a little bit before i kind of (laughs) 
your, <laughs> you know, your trepidation going into yeah. it, being alive on the internet yeah. like that. Can you tell me a little bit about how it's going? What's kind of surprised you about it? Are yeah. you getting, getting a little more comfortable with it? Oh, you know, I still get nervous. Going live is scary. <laughs> um, but we've been doing it every Monday for seven weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, and we take questions from people online and I try to answer them. Um, you know, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 10. But, you know, I, I do a little research beforehand and have my notes in front of me. And uh, it seems to be going well. People are responding well. Uh, people are asking us questions and engaging and sharing the video. And that's what we want. So, that's awesome. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, tell me a little bit about because one, one question that, that we're always asking and some of the stuff that we're working on in the neighborhood is is using the technology versus, you know, uh, we don't want anybody to feel left out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's obviously people that maybe aren't on Facebook or have the technology, but right. are definitely, you know, coming to the library to use the computers yes. or, or formerly community spaces, you know? Uh, you, know, it, you know, what is the concern there? Are you saying, okay, we have this kind of wide thing, but we have, you know, how yeah. do you kind of decide what goes where? Well, you have to do all the things, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go where people are. So, you know, in addition to the social media, I'm always going to community meetings as well and kind of spreading the message that way as well. So for people who don't have access to the internet but are out in the community, um, we can reach them that way. Um, but certainly, you know, there are some people who can't make it out to community meetings and do have access to the internet. And that's one of the, I remember last year we had a community meeting in Beachview about some developments, um, happening on Broadway Avenue. And, um, I think you were helpful in getting a, a live stream of that meeting going so that yeah. people a, could participate. Well, well, Cut and Run Studios did, yeah. did the actual video live stream, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we kind of did a podcast version to put out there, and it was definitely, we put it out, and, and it was well downloaded. I think, I think maybe a couple hundred downloads of that. Screens yeah. were in the hundreds. Like, it was more than the maybe 30 people that end up in that room and yeah. in the basement of a church. You right. Know? People have different work schedules. Absolutely. People, um, you know, have mobility issues. And mm -hmm. so, um, and not every Everybody loves to go out on the weekday night. I get that. So, yeah, we got to expand our options. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about like the city. You know, I, I we we talk about on Awesome Cast all the time. You know, we're very focused on, on Pittsburgh and technology, and and we love seeing, especially in this recent administration. It seems like you know the, between the transparency and the yeah. data, I can see when a snowplow has been through my street yes. uh Berg, bird's eye view yeah what, uh, bird's eye view is the name of it yep uh they were just talking about the last community meeting where you can see like exactly what's going on in the neighborhood as far as permits and and other issues mm -hmm. and everything like that um you know you've kind of watched this over the last few years kind of yeah. develop and go out there like what, what are kind of your perspectives on that yeah well i mean councilwoman rudiak and i were at the forefront of that actually mm -hmm. we passed a, an open data law to make sure that all of the data sets that the city owns from you know the street paving list to um, you know, any number of things, all the data we own is now public. Um, so instead of having to do a really burdensome Freedom of Information Act request, people can just go online and download data sets. And that's prompting um, a lot of tech people to create these new apps that are really useful. And, you know, um, some people don't get a kick out of looking at Excel spreadsheets of numbers. So um, developers are really helpful in creating apps that make this data accessible. So we do have um, things like Berg's Eye View um, that allow us to see you know, all of the 311 requests in the neighborhood and um, where they are in the process. And, you know, is this vacant property going to court now or what's what's happening with it? Um, you can see um, crimes in the neighborhood, police calls. Um, we have an app, uh, Snowplow Tracker. So you can see where the snowplow has been. That's really helpful to us as well. I shouldn't underestimate mm -hmm. that when people call our office and want to know why the snowplow hasn't been there yet. You know, it's really helpful in some cases to say, well, you know, they have been there, it's still snowing, and um, mm. we'd ask you to be patient. So we can really track where our resources are going as well. Um, and really important, I want, to, I want to drive home that snowplow for those yeah. maybe not in the area <laughs> or not in Beachview, like legit, it's like, can I make it up that hill if yeah. it's gone by yet, yeah. or should I go home yet? You know, at that point, like we've literally, we've had somebody in the car like pull it up and says, "Somebody hit our hill. Should I park like two blocks away and just deal with it?" Like it's 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 tough. Yeah, like one of the steepest uh, you know areas in the neighborhood. There's yeah. Oh, we were talking about 311, 311. and we were talking about 311 is amazing, guys. <laughs> it is amazing. And you know what? I have to say, um, it's improved a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. So it used to be kind of like 
a faraway cave that you threw your problems into and never got any response back. Yeah, um, a week later, you get the, the problem code and be like, well, this is a problem now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this has been a problem for a week already. No, yeah. now, um, you know, if you have the app and you create an account, it'll send you notifications when there's an update. So it's been sent to Public Works and you can mm. see that and you can see the response from the person in the field looking at the issue and what they're going to do about it. Or, you know, if it's a, if it's a, a building maintenance issue that will have to go to court eventually. It'll give you updates when they have reinspections and when, you know, each step of the way. So it, 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 it I don't know if I have a better way to say this, but it kind of, it kind of like assists the the nebby neighbor problem. You know, yeah. Because as in, as in the point of, you know, you want to know what's going on in your in your neighborhood. Yes. But you don't want you don't want somebody to pick up the phone and call them down the the city every day and, and tying up the phone line, right? If, yeah. if it can be better served through these kinds of methods. Right, it saves staff time. Um, you know, we want 311 to be open to new new concerns mm -hmm. um, and answering those questions and especially available to people who don't have smartphones and don't have, um, you know, access to the internet all the time. So they can call um, the traditional way and, you know, many of the rest of us can, you know, keep tabs in a more passive way. But yeah, all of these tools are very, they assist us in being a little nebbier and I don't I don't think that's a problem I think you know we're all better off when we know what's going on in our neighborhoods yeah <laughs> so this has been going for a little bit these initiatives um kind of what's kind of uh, kind of surprised you like like are there kind of problems that got solved through this or 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 are there things that have popped up that that as a city you guys have kind of like like, like oh that we solved this problem like I didn't know it yeah, you know, I mean, for me personally, it's been really helpful in just staying on some of those persistent issues in the neighborhood. They so don't fade away at that point. They don't fade away. I don't forget about it, and mm. it's somewhere deep in my email. It, you know, it sends me a notification, or I, you know, the grass starts growing again, and I see that one neighbor has not cut their grass, and oh, I have a complaint from last year, mm -hmm. and I'll go in and copy it, and it's super easy. So I think it just helps us stay on top of these issues and, um, you know, and make sure that they eventually get solved because – a lot of the problems that you put through these systems are, are much more complex than people people might understand. So, you know, when we're talking about blight, when we're talking about problems on private property, property law is complex. And, you know, all of the rules for how to get people to to do the right thing are, are really complex. So it's helpful um, to have these tools so that we can keep up our, our advocacy for our neighborhoods over a longer period of time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, if people want to find out what's going on with you, whether it's oh, yeah. campaign or otherwise, uh, city level or anything else, where can people find you online? Yeah. So people can find me on AshleyDeemer.com, but my name's spelled funny. So you can look at the, the poster <laughs> like behind me. It's like A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H. Or, or on the L -E -I -G -H. Uh, so check me out on AshleyDeemer.com. But really the better place to find us is on Facebook, Ashley Deemer for City Council. And uh, I'm on Twitter, at Ashley Deemer. So um, yeah. Join there us. you go. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure knowing you over the last uh, year and then and, and around city and everything Ditto. else and uh, the, all the events <laughs> and everything in Beachview. So thanks for letting us rope you into all kinds of new things in yeah, Beachview. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things. There's a few things I've been involved in now. Yeah. Um, but uh, of course, please check out everything out and check out uh, the rest of our interviews that we have going on at awesomecast.com. We look up the awesome channel, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And like I said, the video versions for Awesome Cast on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, and thank you to my awesome guests. Ah, oh, thank you. You've been our awesome audience, wherever <laughs> camera you're on. Thanks for sticking and, with us. And uh, have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.